Hey guys, I'm Mac Watson, if you didn't know, now you know. And I am Drunken Uncle, but we knew that already. Today I want to make a video talk about subtle sexism. This is something that I have been encountering in my day-to-day -day life a lot recently. How you found the strength and the courage to continue with your daily life, you must be one hell of a woman. So deeply embedded in how we function as a society. Wait, so if society still functions despite this subtle sexism being so deeply embedded in everyday life, then doesn't that mean everything's just fine, really? That a lot of the time we just kind of like glaze over them. Just as a well-balanced adult would. The little things, the weird, bizarre, kind of funny day-to-day -day things that we as women have to deal with. See, you say funny things, but I'm guessing that your sense of humour is going to range from Huh? To what's that about? I'm fucking sick of it. You're probably fucking sick of it. Let's break this thing wide open. Like a vagina. Talking about sports. I cannot tell you how many times I have been in a group of people and guys start talking about sports as if the women aren't even in the room. I've only heard your voice for about half a minute now and I'm already trying to ignore you. So first of all, I probably know more about the Raptors than you do. Why yeah, no idea who the Raptors are, but well done you. You named a team. Why do you assume that the girls don't want to talk about that? Mac, maybe they just don't want to fucking talk to you. It's happened to me countless times, like at a workplace, like, you know, like you're at work in the morning. And well, there you go then. It's the morning and people are in work. They're already miserable enough without having your fucking wet rag of a face coming over and ruining everything. And a group of guys were talking about the game last night. These are all my buddies at work. They know that I... I'm a basketball fan, but never do they include me in the conversation. And they probably know about your hobby making YouTube videos complaining about the most trivial shit. That's why they don't involve you in the conversation, Mac. It's not because you're a woman, it's because you're fucking annoying. My opinion is like, couldn't possibly be valid because I wouldn't understand sports, right? Because I'm a dumb woman, I don't get sports, you have to explain it to me. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely that and not that annoying face and voice that you just put on to mock them. If you don't understand how to be a functioning human being in a conversation, then you have no chance understanding the offside rule. Yeah, uh, pretending girls aren't in the room while you talk about sports is not fucking cool. Except they weren't trying to be cool, Mac. They were trying to have a conversation about sports and hopefully enjoy it, which is why you weren't in the conversation. Especially if, you know, if if these girlfriends or colleagues of yours have like made it clear that they're into sports and they want to talk about it. Well then they could go over and engage in the conversation instead of expecting the conversation to come over and engage with them like entitled little wankers. Why is it that I've been watching basketball for most of my life but because you have a dick, you're automatically more qualified to talk about the topic than I would be. Maybe it's because they don't piss and moan whenever they don't get included. Now, what am I talking about? It's definitely penis. Guys at the gym. Jesus Christ. So like, I actually avoid going to crowded gym because it is such an uncomfortable place to be. Oh, because everyone is obviously staring at your tits and ass, fuck you now. In a weight room, a lot of guys like think that girls are like looking for their opinion on, you know, like the exercise they're doing. What about me screams? Wait, what? What about me screams? That has to be the worst editing I've ever seen and I'm a Windows fucking movie maker. What about me screams? Please come over and correct my form and tell me how I should be doing this. Because you were doing it wrong. Some people are helpful like that. I know, what cunts? I knew that would be your sense of humour. I fucking called it. My sister and I were at a gym together a couple months ago and we had a couple of weights that we were like we we're moving from one area to the gym to the other and we had set our weights down and literally we just turned around to like move our stuff and we were about to go back and get them and this guy just comes up to us and goes you know you need to put your weights away right well you did leave your weights on the floor what about that interaction like made him feel like a cool big dude like is it like what like someone explain that to me like because here's the thing he wouldn't say that to a dude no, you are right. It would have probably been more along the lines of pick up your fucking weights, cunt bubble. Guys, if girls are working out in the same area as you, fuck off. Let them do their shit. You know what? If they're doing something wrong, fucking let them. It's not your job to come in and correct their form. No you do know that you can quite seriously injure yourself if you lift weights incorrectly, don't you? And might I remind you that you can always fuck off to a woman's only gym, presumably where no one stops you from hurting yourself and the floor is covered with loose weights. Mind your own goddamn business. 
making fun of girls for being bad at technology. That's such like an easy joke. I don't know, like being like, oh my god, like, huh, it's right there. Like, how did you not like figure that out? Huh, it's right there. Huh. Well, if it is such an easy joke, then how did you fuck it up so bad? Like I say to me recently, explaining technology to you is like explaining technology to my grandma. That to me is just such a clearly gendered thing. The sky is blue, grass is green, and girls are bad at technology. It's like, I'm actually pretty good at technology. Like, oh, come on, Mac. Really? What about me? Screams. Do you see what I'm seeing yet? What the fuck? Like, not the 1950s. Like, tons of women in, like, STEM jobs. Like, you have to shut the fuck up about that stuff now. Like, done. We're done. Also saying that girls are bad drivers. Mac, you can't even speak coherently. I'd be terrified if you had control of a vehicle. I was driving someone the other day. Who in their right mind gave you a driver's license? Here's the thing. Oh, do you notice how the background music just stopped? This must mean she's getting real. I have found in my life many times when I've tried to raise concerns about stuff like this to either male friends or boyfriends at the time or colleagues or whatever it is, uh, a lot of the time I would just, it would just be completely dismissed. Probably because life is hard enough without having to pander to your trivial bullshit. As me being too sensitive or me, you know, misinterpreting the situation. And I hear those excuses all the time. No, because it couldn't possibly be that you're being oversensitive or even misinterpreting the situation, could it? No, no, no. If everyone else has got the problem, no, sexism. So if you're a guy and your girlfriend or your friend or your sister or your daughter come to you and tell you that something shitty and sexist like this happened, I have a question for you. Okay? Why is your first instinct to dismiss it? Ah, now you see, I wouldn't. Because the women I have around me are generally very smart. Smart enough to know when they are being oversensitive or possibly misinterpreting a situation and would therefore not get upset by such trivial bullshit. Are you understanding why no one wants to talk about basketball with you now, Mac? Why so often is the impulse to go, oh, I'm sure he didn't mean it that way. Why do you choose to believe a perfect stranger over your friend or daughter or girlfriend or sister? I'm guessing you're talking from experience here, Mac. Now listen to me when I say it is more likely that someone keeps crying wolf than someone keeps seeing a shit ton of wolves. Why is it that a stranger gets your allegiance over someone you care about? Because I just don't understand that. Like, you think that we're making this shit up? What possible earthly reason could we have to make shitty stuff like this up? Because feminism has been striving for equality between the genders and now that has been achieved you have nothing left to fight for so you have to exaggerate certain things to make it seem as though you're still oppressed? I don't have enough time in the day to like come up with fake scenarios where guys were shitty to me because I was a woman. Well you've done pretty well considering. So why is it your first instinct is to doubt and your first instinct is to minimize and your first instinct is to defend a guy you don't even know? When someone thinks it's a feasible option to defend the person they've never even met rather than defend your honour, that should tell you something, Mac. Plus, why are you running to your male friends and colleagues with this? I thought you were a strong, independent fleur. I don't get it. I'll bring these little things up to you and albeit, no, they're not, they're not huge, life-ruining things, but they're little things that happen to me on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's my reality. Where does this need to defend this person who you don't even know come from? Okay, I'm gonna pick one example from your list then. I'm not going to get into a fight with someone who obviously regularly goes to the gym enough to know the proper form for lifting weights and to pass that expertise on to other people because you left your weights on the fucking floor. It's not happening. You said yourself, they're not huge things, so do what everyone else does and just carry on living. If a woman in your life who you care about comes to you and tells you something like this has happened, maybe she's not overreacting. Because it's like that whole way of thinking feeds into a very dangerous one when the issues are bigger. Yeah, exactly. Think about how that statement applies to you. These are tiny things, so if something actually happens, you would go into fucking meltdown. Are you sure he raped you? And there it is. We finally got to rape. Mac, you cannot compare rape with someone saying you drive like a girl. Are you sure you weren't just, like, really drunk? Are you sure you just didn't want to sleep with him? See, when you apply those questions to something a lot more serious, consequences, are pretty dire. Agreed, which is why no one says those things to a rape victim, Mac. Let me lay this out for you simply. Rape? Hefty, hefty, hefty. Not being invited to a conversation about basketball? Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. So please, stop dismissing us. Treating us like we're 
difficult or dramatic or, you know, trying to make an issue out of something that doesn't exist. Well, then stop being difficult, dramatic, and trying to make an issue out of something that doesn't exist. Because it does exist. Oh. Oh, well, I'm in my place now then, aren't I? And I can tell you that because it's my reality every day of my life. And there's no chance that you're just after attention here, Mac. No chance at all. Making a video, uploading it to YouTube, no chance. And what if you trusted me? Why, then I'd be a fool. Because then I wouldn't have to justify this shit again and again and again. It's already hard enough. We're already ingrained to doubt it. Like, oh, maybe I did say something wrong. Like, my friend was riding her bike home last night and a guy yelled at her nice ass. Are you just jealous that your friend has a nice ass and you've got a face like one? Are you sure he said nice ass? Are you sure you didn't hear him wrong? Are you sure he didn't mean it as a compliment? Are you sure he wasn't yelling at someone else? Are you sure he wasn't talking to himself? It gets exhausting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be exhausting throwing a tantrum several times a day over absolutely nothing. And then, of course, there's all the effort you put into throwing reason out the window. Fuck! Right, well, thank you very much for watching, guys. The channel's still growing, and I think it might be something to be proud of one day. But until then, you are just as bad as me. And remember, making sure someone doesn't injure themselves is as bad as raping them.